today I'm going to be going over quite possibly one of the most important daily rituals, habits, routines, ways of thinking that you can be able to incorporate into your life probably for the rest of eternity. I mean, this is the most solid practice that will help you not only alleviate, you know, daily stressors, anxiety, worries, doubts, these types of things that just cripple your mind and can get you into a downward spiral of depression. The topic that I want to speak about is gratitude, being thankful, grateful, appreciative of everything that you do have. Because when you have gratitude, it eliminates all of these symptoms that could be constant daily stressors um, inflicting pain upon you and your mind and stopping you from being able to take the right actions and the right decisions in your daily life. Gratitude is basically above all else. Like on a spiritual level, it connects you with heaven and sets you apart from hell. Gratitude conditions your brain to operate smoothly instead of initiating a cog and then having it stop and then having to recenter your focus and recalibrate. Gratitude is like the oil to those cogs and it keeps you going so that you can be able to have that momentum and not be stopped. Whether it's somebody pressing their opinion upon you or literally standing in front of you, you're thankful for the relationship that you have with yourself because you're in self-acceptance and then you also see everything as good, which is the key to happiness. Literally saying, all is good. All's good, right? So, it's all good is literally like an expression of gratitude. So, how I'm going to open this up for you is by sharing um, a little gratitude ritual that you can be able to do, and I want to make sure it's on point. So, I have this, this um, daily non-negotiable that's a social contract for me that basically I do on routine, and I want to get it perfectly accurate. You can keep in what it is that you want and you can push out what you don't but ultimately like i said gratitude is it's basically in a daily essential foundation for everything that you do and if you do this every day you know you're going to be able to connect to your own integrity and share your blessings with the rest of the world so if you agree to this social contract then it's also going to open up a spiritual connection with the God that is above all else, the Creator. And I really think that this is important for your own emotional reflection because when you are able to emotionally um, repeat your beliefs, that's actually what faith is. And when you internalize, the, internalize those beliefs, um, it ends up becoming a part of you as a spiritual being. So you want to have that spiritual freedom. You have to incorporate that into your spiritual practice. That all starts with emotional freedom and emotional freedom, um, in internalizing your emotions with your thoughts, your beliefs, is what helps you improve your memory. Because if you just read a book and you say, hey, I'm going to look at this and try and understand it, for the most part, it's a logical interpretation of what is actually happening. So when you bring the emotion into it and you visualize it and kind of manifest it into your reality from what you're imagining, inside of your brain, then you're going to get a more effective reading experience. But you have to practice it, right? Any Anything, like everything, actually takes practice. So gratitude is going to be the greatest practice that you will probably ever have because nothing can stop you when you're grateful, when you're acceptant of everything that actually is, and then you can see it as good. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this in my daily ritual, my daily routine, um, which is I ask God in gratitude for what is my assignment for the day. So literally in the morning as I roll out of bed, I'm sitting on the edge of my bed. I, I open my hands up like this. And in gratitude, I am thankful to God for giving me 
another day to breathe life into this world. Lord, what is my assignment today? So if you have a daily assignment, if you pull off this ritual, you, you know, you already blessed your day. And then you blessed the energy in the space that we call the field. So when you put your energy into the space, it's literally touching other parts of the world and you don't even have to be there physically to be able to have this happen. So when you believe in that which you don't see more than what you do see, then you are able to make the connection to the energy that is in the field apart from the internal world and the realm that you are inhabiting. And that spiritual connection is really the ultimate freedom that we're trying to get to. Um, emotional freedom is what I'm sharing here. Emotional freedom is really the foundation to being able to build and be a, a man or woman of integrity so that you can have the character to be able to manage your talents, your gifts. So when you open up your day in gratitude, it literally is helping shape you and giving you all of those parts to feel yourself as a whole and complete being lacking in nothing. So if you can imagine the importance of this, it shifts your beliefs, it shifts your negative forms of thinking, it stops you from looking at things and being cynical, believing other people have bad motives and intentions. You know, you're not out to get other people or get anything from them. You're not being punitive, trying to inflict punishment. I mean, your intentions are clear and, and you know, in that respect, you're, you treat people well, you treat people with dignity, and you're not, not, not trying to hurt anybody by inflicting your own responsibility for your own emotions onto somebody else. Because when you do that, you become a toxic person. Because internally, you are so negative and conflicted that everybody else has to be responsible for your emotions. So literally, you are a projection and a mirror of a negative, misshapen, disformed integrity. And that's not good. That's not good at all. Um, so that's essentially what we're trying to do here is with all of these practices, with all of these truths that we unlock so that you can be able to experience emotional freedom, we're trying to create good humans who build their character to be able to be someone who is actually worth knowing. And I happen to start in the process from being somebody who is a nobody, who lost his identity, who lost his voice, and was then able to internalize his, his voice and connect it to the awareness of the world so that he's able to create this vision of unity that he's staying true to. Because in the art of seeking progress in this process, it's actually seeking truth. And every single step that I took was taking that truth, grasping it, and then pulling it into my container until it was full. And all I had left to do was share it with the world. So if I am to pour out for you from this container, then I have to do it at my very best. Here's the thing though, I cannot access all of my gifts. Literally, most of my talents are in the classification of me being a performer, meaning I look to get a reaction out of you to then take that energy and bounce it back to make you feel better, right? So with that, I have many talents that I discovered by shaping my character and becoming the person I actually am. If I didn't go through that process, then I probably wouldn't have discovered as many talents, nor would I have created the energetic exchange to be able to gain those talents and exchange with other people too. So there's different values and things that you can be able to acquire through um, accepting these gifts that you may not believe you have. And you may be worthy in your potential of receiving other gifts that you would otherwise not have if you weren't open to what you didn't believe in, right? So I am the great communicator. I connect with everybody, any and everybody, and I'm able to do that only because I built my character. And in turn, in building my character, I lowered myself to be able to pick bigger things up and I dissolved my ego, which is literally the isolator as an individual which is stopping you and preventing you from being able to connect with the rest of the world your ego differentiates you and if it differentiates you in the way that you express yourself and activate your whole and being able to connect with everybody else in their souls then it's not staying true to the vision of unity so that's where we move from 
using the ego as something for survival into something that is actually prone to thriving with the rest of society as a whole. So here's the kicker though. I can't use my talents and my gifts as my own unique role. That's why it's so important to become in tune with your own soul. If you can do that first, then you have built the character to be able to not only manage your talents, but to be okay without having the balance of them in your integrity. So literally, because I lose about five of my talents, which, which are underneath the personality of being a performer or an entertainer, um, I am a dancer, an entertainer, a performer, an artist, and a singer. Now, there's no guarantee that I can actually sing because my spine is moving me forward like this so that my neck and my body is shifting and this is my normal posture, okay? My ears should not be above my toes, but the situation is that instead of, you hear that crack? Instead of having my chest out like this and my diaphragm and my, my rib cage open and my neck back in a proper sturdy position, you know, it's, it's like this. And what happens is all of my body tissue is constricting and it's tightening. It's extremely tight, pain, numbed, and tingling on my entire left side of my body. So what that does is I am losing my ability to hold myself up. So everything is folding over and collapsing. And this is all because of an, an entrapped nerve that is attached to my testicle because I had a surgery at the age of 13 that ended up resulting in a bodily compromise that degenerated my physical container over time. So I am at and against fighting for my life to be able to regain my container because without my physical body, I am having trouble being responsible for everything, including my emotions, you know, my spirit, and simply enough, being able to value um, everything when it comes to my health, that which includes my physical body. And also, you know, my... I'm, I'm having trouble thinking of the fourth one. There's your physical health, there's your emotional health, your spiritual health, and your mental health. There we go, there we go. So I have all of those in check, but the thing is, it becomes dysregulated. So I'm literally being tested because my state ends up getting cut. It ends up getting severed. Literally, my brain flow from my brain to my body, the messages are delayed because my atlas is out of place. So if I, if I naturally posture myself, this is how my neck should hang. Okay, but I have to use the strength to be able to rotate this back part here back into position and try and hold it. But here's the thing, over eight years, all of that has let go. And now it's filled with fascia, it's filled with scar tissue, and it's not healing appropriately. So literally, it's in the wrong position and it holds there. And there's nothing I can do to put it back unless if I break it all down and move my spine back into place and get rid of the entrapped nerve or end up moving it back into place, which I'm weighing the options between making the complete sacrifice of removing my testicle to be able to survive and live my life or moving the nerve back into place. Like these are my options here. And the third option is to completely just remove the nerve itself and have my testicle hang there numb and misshapen due to the surgery and not be able to trust if the end result would actually help me uh, and that's not too great. That's not too great because I have legs that are tree trunks and for eight years, you know, the muscle between, you know, my thighs and my balls being out in front of my body stops me from having any wiggle space. So when I sit, sleep, walk, do anything, you know, it pains me. I'm, I'm literally being stabbed. And over time, you know, my body progressed and changed its posture, trying to be able to formulate a way to be able to deviate from the circumstances of my own body attacking me. So what literally ends up happening is, you know, I have trouble breathing. My, my spine contorts and it's twisted 45 degrees this way and it's actually hunched over. If I sit normally, um, I suppose I look like this and, you know, my neck is down like this 
and this shoulder is collapsed. There's no strength there. All the muscle, everything in between my shoulder, there's literally bread rolls in between my shoulder, lay, shoulder blades, my back, everything throughout my ass, which means I have a lot of, lot of problems in being able to move this leg, and there's a lot of other symptoms and circumstances because of that, and my leg ends up coming out here to avoid me you know, having problems down here. So everything is literally a bodily compromise. So what ends up happening is, you know, your, your state ends up getting disrupted um, irregularly. And it can, it can hit you really hard. It can hit you really hard and you can't control your thoughts, your emotions, you know, your physical body and your mental capacity to be able to make the right decision. So gratitude would help you with that if you were to just able to be able to harness it. Um, and there's a lot of pain, you know, like here's the thing, your state comes first. You have to be able to control your state because your state controls your story. If you cannot overcome your state, then your story is therefore validated and it justifies the reason why you can't change your story because your state is your ability to be able to manage your own integrity, your life, your soul, everything. Um, so if you can be able to initiate that in a positive mentality, then you can be able to change your story, which also changes the strategies that you take to be able to change everything by the decisions that you make. So your state is first, right? And my state gets disrupted. So I am literally being disciplined. God is disciplining me and saying, look, you've got to be able to manage your shit and take care of yourself while also not being able to handle your talents. And you got to build your character. And then you've got to lead a nation of people to be able to do the same and unite souls before you show them their role. So it's crazy to think that I am being used as a testimonial going through so much pain, having physical thorns in my body, mental thorns, and you know, so many emotional pains and thorns and burdens and everybody in the world betraying me so that I can become the person that I actually am. And you know, it's like, it's like, it's like so crazy. If you know the story of Michael Jackson, Jackson is very similar to me. He has a miserable life. He's the most lonely person in the world, yet he's the greatest entertainer and performer ever in history. And all he wanted is connection with people and to feel loved, appreciated, and understood. And, and that's all we want as humans, right? But everybody defiled him and degraded him and told him he was a liar and they made all these judgments and brought him to court. And you know, everybody backstabbed that guy. And all he was was a giant vessel of joy and a beacon of hope for the world. He, he shared a message that changed millions of people's lives. And he grew up having a family that was mentally, verbally, emotionally, physically abusive because they were actually a family of narcissists, which we're going to be talking about that later. Narcissistic abuse, you being a codependent, you know, you having your, your survival threaten your ability to thrive and differentiate good from bad, black and white. You got to see, see the gray in between, see what's actually useful. We'll talk about all that. Um... But gratitude is really the, the, the core state of everything that you're going to do from here on out. So I wanted to give you an overview of all the previous topics so you just get a general understanding, internalizing to your awareness before you start doing any rituals or, or getting into more concrete information that's very specific. So when you get your, your morality and get a sense of identity, you know, what you're actually looking for um, and, and having control and safety and all these different things as the basis of everything, then you can be able to initiate some of these practices. But before then, you just you just need information because you're confused. You know, you're just trying to cling to anything and gain control and you're losing yourself. So that's why I, I, I made it in this order. Um, and then we can talk more in detail about narcissistic abuse and, and negative people and some of the things that I've gone through um, to be able to make that connection, right? So here's where things get interesting. I cannot access my talents. The only talents I have right now are being a speaker, which is my second best talent, um, being a healer, and also a leader, which is like, it connects all the dots, being a leader. So I have three gifts that I can be able to use right now, and I'm using a speaker, a healer, and a leader to be an emotional freedom coach and speaker, right? It makes sense. Uh, me being a performer is in another part of my life. So what I literally have to do is unite souls before I show them their role. 
um, because that way you can be able to have a character to not only manage your talents, but be okay without them. So me being the most happiest person you've ever met, while also being the most miserable person you know, is my current status. And to be able to change that, I have to serve people and help other people build the character and the self-awareness to know who they are, why they're here, what they're here to do, and literally help create a human wall and army of people who are going to bring good into humanity. And that way, you know, we can be able to tackle the obstacles of some of the impending, you know, forces that we're facing with negativity brewing and, you know, narcissism and so many different things that um, we're really going to be challenged by in these coming years, especially with social media. Um, basically, you know, this being a test and then virtual reality is going to take over and we're going to have, you know, um, some really complicated challenges when it comes to people um, valuing their own individual self and not anybody else so it's going to be a real big clash and i need good people on my side so that we can be able to connect deeply connect and understand one another and then come together and staying true to the vision of unity so i um i don't know if i'm the chosen leader but i'm taking on the role i'm taking on being able to sacrifice my life for everybody and I hope you can understand that I'm on a very great mission here. And uh, I need your help. I need your participation. You know, I can't do this without you. And you're making it all possible for me. And the rest of the world. Humanity. Okay, we're going to save the earth together. Alright, so let's love and accept yourself and activate your potential and share all that you are and as much as possible with the world so you can activate your potential and live a life of bliss. Because bliss is the activation of the function of potential, okay? So, I have a huge compromise, and it's, it's, it's terrible um, not being able to access my gifts and share them with the world. Like, my dying will, ever since I started doing a hashtag ad walk, walking in my gifts and sharing them in service with the world, this is the next level of character that you're going to be taking after ad talks you're gonna start your ad walk, in which case you can be able to continue doing ad talks, but instead of it just being on focus on self-awareness and connection to the awareness of the rest of the world through your improvement and seeking truth, you're gonna be in service of others and answering their questions too. So literally, you're gonna be growing in your own professional you know, role, and then you're also going to be helping other people in their progression by sharing how that affects you and everybody else and, you know, Developing the skill so that you can own your character. You're, you're, you're going to be doing some great things. You don't necessarily have to do them daily at that point because you've done all the emotional healing that you need to be able to be you, right? Um, so you can do it periodically. I'm not going to demand that you have to do it because I don't need to do it. But here's the thing about mental health is that just because you have it doesn't mean you don't need to maintain it, right? Right? So you need to be able to have that ability to freely express yourself and continue that sort of education and, and removal of these negative thoughts so that you can put more good in. So um, that's why the ad walk is really making the complete discovery along your freedom journey and saying, hey, you know, I have the choice to be able to lay down my life and say, hey, I'm going to carry out. Um, my walk in purpose by following my calling and being the highest, truest expression of myself. So in order to be able to do that, you have to be in love and acceptance of yourself. And that is the foundation of gratification, I mean, and gratification that uh, gratitude gives you. So having a daily gratitude practice is going to give you basically all that you know. Um, and it's going to help you own it. So, look, if you have so many different abilities and talents and you just discovered them and you became this amazing, famous person and then you get hit by a car and medically and physically, you know, your health is compromised, you can't be the superstar that you once were, you know, if you don't have the character to be able to back yourself, 
you're going to be in a very dark hole and climbing out is going to be the hardest thing that you will probably ever do. Right? So here's what we're doing here. We're helping you build the character so that you don't need to be able to operate as your role. If you only have a specific role, you can find fulfillment within your soul without having to be this person. Because here's the thing here. Okay, the self healing process is the first stage that we go through. The emotional reflection method is the second. The third stage and final stage of the emotional freedom journey um, is actually going to be, you know, the freedom journey. So once you get past that, it's, it's the spiritual freedom journey. This is the next level obstacle that you would be attempting to um, travel and, and grow through if you wish to continue. And throughout those three stages, the self-healing process is actually where, you know, you live a life of not, where you're not knowing, right? The emotional reflection method is you live a life where you want to be known. And the freedom journey is where you become somebody who is actually worth knowing. So if you can get to the freedom journey and move on to the next step in the process, which is beyond what I teach right now, um, then you're, you're, you're golden, right? So if you can be someone who is actually worth knowing, you won't be stuck losing your fame, your infamy, when you end up getting into some sort of accident that has you lose your talents, your abilities to share your gifts. For me, I'm, I'm praying it's temporary and I have faith that I'm going to heal through this, right? And, you know, we're just, we're just pulling for the time where things all come together and, you know, we healed Michael, staying true to the vision of unity. Everybody, every soul that I add to this collective is helping me get better so that I can be the world's greatest performer of the 21st century or the leader that ends up standing up for the entire world. You, he you hear me? Like, this is really big. I I'm doing big things and I need your help to make it happen. I cannot do this on my own. So I have huge ambitions, but look, it, where your actions meet your ambitions, that's what creates discipline. So like, I have to be able to manage all of this without having the balance of everything and while also receiving attacks from my body where my body's literally attempting to assassinate me. Like, when it comes to my soul and my physical role here, I feel, I feel like my body is pushing me outside of my own container. Like, my soul wants to separate. Like, I am in so much pain that, like, my spine compresses and I feel like I just need to get the heck out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I am having a separation of my identity while I am also whole. So, here's the expression that I ended my movie with. In Pursuit of Purpose, Finding a Life of Happiness, a two and a half year documentary. And it's a two and a half year personal growth documentary. My container is full. Even while it is leaking, I have to pour out for you. If you understand what that means, it means I filled my character with all of the truth that I needed to be who I actually am. And once I did that, I had to realize that I had a physical compromise that kept me losing parts of my whole. So even while my container is full, it's actually leaking. And all I have to do now that my container is full, meaning my soul, and I know my own unique role, is share my gifts, so I have to pour out for you. My container is full. Even while it is leaking, I have to pour out for you. So literally, I can't take anything more in. I can't do anything more with my life because all I have to do now is give. I have to be in service. I have to give everything that I have. And look, this is what I have for you. I became somebody who's actually worth knowing. I have gifts. Okay? So this is my situation. Thank you for your time and attention and listening to my story, how I build my character, and what, what these challenges are, and why they're so critical to your own benefit. I, I, I want you to know that being able to manage this life has been very challenging 
all of the pain that I've gone through to be able to achieve this emotional maturity where there's more pain through maturation and, you know, more maturation through pain. It's a consistent cycle. Like everything that I learned to acquire this wisdom, to share these unique truths with you, they're not very unique at all. They're worldly truths. They're, you know, spiritual truths. They're developing your character and being someone who's actually worth knowing. So if you can learn how to be able to do that, who you are, why you're here, what you're here to do before everything is taken from you, then you can still live a life of happiness. But listen, you cannot activate bliss unless if you have some other talents that you can immerse yourself in, right? And in turn, you activate your potential and share all that you are with the world by loving and accepting yourself and when you share as much as possible you activate bliss because bliss is the activation of the function of potential so while i'm the happiest person you know i also stand to be the most miserable person too um i can't activate bliss because i need my health to do that to be the performer and person that i actually am so it's it's a huge catch-22 here and what i'm teaching you is something that's disrupted like my state gets disrupted, my character gets disrupted, my decisions get disrupted. I am getting disciplined so hard, so hard to make the right decisions each and every day because I'm in desperation mode, meaning I have a dying will to share my gifts. And each and every decision that I make is literally a life or death, good or bad kind of consequence in this karma that I'm experiencing and also the outcome of the result from my action to reaction to result to new problem that is truth. So if I have a problem, I need to focus on the pain, reveal that pain so that in turn, you know, I'm creating some sort of hope for me and for you and how I express myself. And then also I am creating a solution, which is basically me seeking progress, progress, which is truth. So that is the bottom line of basically everything you need to know if you haven't already seen the video um document don't create you know like enter awareness documentation your one assignment is to do an ad talk a day um in that video it's basically an inspirational movie that's 30 minutes long it's going to be only a small portion um, actually a sixth of my entire movie with some of the most impactful moments that you'll ever see. You're literally seeing my story and what an ad talk a day did for me uh, in creating a life worth living. So this is what I'm talking about here. I'm glad that the gratitude segment is actually the one where you can be able to get your perspective because perspective is key. It's the golden gates that await. If you can't stand in somebody else's shoes, then you're going to judge them and we don't have room for judgment here, okay? Like, like if your ego is clashing with other people, you're not focusing on greater values and strengths and things that we, we need to be solving in this world for humanity. Um, you're, you're literally being a, a, a Debbie Downer. You're being somebody who ends up taking more than they give, which is a child. You know, you're stopping yourself from being able to act, be your greatest potential. Um, hard to hang around somebody who, who, who doesn't own a name. Um, so this is all about becoming worth knowing. And where you're at right now might be, you know, somebody who's even along the freedom journey and is already actually worth knowing. Um, or you're somebody who, you know, doesn't really know who they are and you're going through this process from the beginning. And, you know, this is all about finding your voice so that you can live out your calling. You have the choice. And at the end of all this, look, you have the option to be an, a, an Earthwards human emotional freedom coach. Okay? You can be in my school of humans as somebody who's going to be sharing and showing other people how to do this because you know how to get self-awareness. So when you're certified for that by passing the test, which is basically defining each truth which is going to be you know 300 different questions <sighs> you're you're gonna have to uh know your stuff so by going through all this you're learning that 
Okay, and this is basic. Everything I'm saying is basic so that any or everybody should be able to understand what I'm saying. If I start getting into talking like I'm a super smart person, then I lose half my audience, right? And then you're going to have to pull out a dictionary every, every time I say something. So when it comes to extreme vocabulary, we're keeping it simple here. Okay, we're keeping my speech simple so that I can connect with the world. All right, this is, this is not about, you know, me being somebody who ends up, you know, showing off and, and standing out as an individual and having a great life and I'm putting you down. No, this is not about that. This is about staying true to the vision of unity. So in order to do that, I have to connect with everybody, okay? So everybody's got the opportunity, you've got the option, but at the end of that tunnel, you're going to be someone who's actually worth knowing. You're going to be self-aware, you're going to know who you are, why you're here, and what you're here to do. So you have the option to be an Earthwards Human Emotional Freedom Coach at the School of Humans. Um, and if you want to do that, then great. You know, you're always going to be welcome in my family. You're always going to be, you know, welcome to sit at my table. And, you know, um, you will have the highest right in the mode of op familia. In which case, if you don't know what mode of op is, it is mode, evolution, operation. So in this process, um, we are actually creating a mode, which is a method, um, for evolution, which is a, a progress and process to create a better humanity. Um, and as long as you're operating in that, you are creating this active experience that evolves this whole process and progress for humanity to be good as a whole. So we're changing the world here. Okay, so the motivat familia is mode, evolution, operation, family. Get it? Okay, it's had so many different names, but I went back to the original version that I created back in 2016 um, when I was listening to Public Enemy. This name came up in my mind, and you know, I held on to it, and I was it went through my head mode, ev, op. I'm going to be motive up. Am I going to be rapping to that? I don't know what I'm going to be doing with that name. Is it going to be my alter ego? Is it going to be some sort of alias? Is it going to be an expression or an acronym that people catch on to? Um, okay, I don't know yet, right? Here's the thing that's really cool, though. Mode Evolution Operation is also my initials. M-E-O. Okay? Mode Evolution Operation. When you say it really fast... It comes out as motive op. Motive op, motive op, motive op, motive op, motive op, motive op. The motive is to operate, right? The motive is the operation. We are executing upon this operation for a mode, evolution, and then opportunity or oper operation, right? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And we're, we're literally developing the opportunity. Um, so we're making people connect through having empathetic values over pleasure. Um, and it's really interesting, really interesting stuff. Um, we're, making, we're making others develop empathy. You know, I'll just forget all the other names because there were like four versions of it and the first one is the best. All right. Um, I don't want to create any other expressions that confuse you because it confuses me and mode evolution, evolution operation is fine for motive op. When you say it really fast, it's motive op, motive op. Um, so here's where, where we're going to get into the gratitude practice. And long term, we're going to create um, a legacy with motive op that nothing is a waste if you reuse it wisely that can go on without me um, because while I'm leading this you know um, it's it's for the human race that we we stay true to the vision of unity so if I'm not here um, while this operation is is has been initiated and is ongoing I would like for you to keep it going okay without me because essentially all of you are becoming a duplicate of me well, I may be the leader and I may be the example, the practitioner, you know, I may be the role model here and the voice for everybody. Look, you can disassociate 
Michael Orthosada, even if my initials are in motiv the Motivat Familia, um, I don't have to be the face of it all, okay? You don't have to do it for me. This isn't for me. It's it's for everybody else. You know, it's for humanity. It's 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 for God. It's it's for higher practices than myself. Um, this is real, you know. So I hope you you develop some sort of spiritual foundation because the reason why that's there is because truth at the end of the tunnel is that God is real, and you know, this is what we need to believe. We need to have trust in and faith in. And we need to execute upon being human um, so that we can win this war. It's very important, very important that we, we become good humans. So most people won't do the work. Most people won't desire building the character to be able to know themselves. You know, they're missing out. They're really missing out. So you get to watch this 40 minute video and go into some really, really deep stuff about my life and, and what this whole vision's about, great. You get to hear it from me. Now let's move forward and talk about the practices that are gonna get you there, okay? Thank you for listening. I mean, really, thank you for your time and attention because this, this is intense. Um, I don't want you to get tensed by it. So let's be free, let's be loose, all right? We're gonna do the great daily gratitude practice now um, so that you can get an idea. All right, so like I said, you ask God in gratitude for life. What is my assignment for the day? And then, you know, by putting that energy out, um, you can be able to bring it back in and internalize it and you'll, you'll find out throughout the day. Um, then you do some variation of meditation, breath work, study, and writing. In particular, um, what I like to do is from doing my ad talk a day when I was doing it, um, I would do that afterwards. So I would do my ad talks at night before I went to bed. So that way I have the entire story laid out. You know, I might be a little tired but um, and worn out and kind of looking ugly. Um, but, you know, inside I, I felt like I, I accomplished something and I wanted to document that and share it. So I would do that at the end of the day. And then I would put you know, what it is that I was goal setting for and progressing through the whole story. I would put that energy out into the space and hold on to it um, and let it go at the same time. So what I was effectively doing was goal setting throughout the night and, and while I was sleeping, I could be able to learn and manifest that in my reality. And then when I wake up, I may have some new ideas or knowledge that could help me or I may have helped other people you know, while I'm sleeping. Um, so it's really, really interesting stuff when you get to this spiritual freedom part. Um, but basically, you know, the meditation, daily meditation breath work, I don't have any extreme practices for that, but um, you can inhale for four seconds and then exhale for four seconds, four times. So basically, um, we're gonna give it a go, you know, like 32 seconds. So there is a, a flash briefing called um called um um the daily refresh so we're gonna do that and this is this is what kind of what i follow he gives a quote and stuff john lee dumas does it actually you know i don't want any copyright problems um if i end up playing this so we're not gonna do that okay um but basically you inhale deeply and then for four seconds exhale deeply for four seconds and you do it four times okay so breathe in out by the way both of them are through your nose breathe in out breathe in out Breathe in, out. So that's very brief and it definitely calms you when you get some, some good breath into your lungs, passing through your body. It gets your blood flow stimulated, your brain functioning. 
Um, it releases some stress and, and, and just gets you initiated at the start of your day. Um, so after that, the asking for the assignment, you notice how I'm very calm now. Um, you have that breath work. Um, you can you can read up on something and study. You know, read a mini like five minute book or something. Um, a great app for that. I'm not sure if I have it. Yeah, Blinkist. So Blinkist is a great app you can get on the App Store. Um, me in particular, I don't use it. So I just happen to be recommending it because a lot of people like to use it. Short stories, you know, you can pick what you want, read through that new story every day. You can listen to a podcast, you know, the daily refresh. Gary V365 is a great flash briefing for your Amazon Alexa or your Google Dot, whatever you have. Um, if you are interested in voice technology, it's the future. I would highly consider investing into it for your business, getting your message out there. Um, like this thing is going to be a pager. Okay, and then we're going to have virtual reality. So it's coming. All right. Focus on the future. <laughs> um, and then writing. So what I would do is um, in the morning, I would review my awareness documentation from the day, maybe as I'm getting dressed um, and getting ready, I would listen to it like um, I could play it on the TV, you know, or I could come and sit down on the computer. You know, um, you, you, you're supposed to be watching it. Um, you can also listen to it, but you only get the tone, tonality of your voice and the words you say. So if you watch yourself play back, you get more value, um, more, more emotional reflection, right? So here's the thing. Um, you actually want to be watching it, reviewing it, and then writing a review of what the awareness documentation is. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this previously in the actual video or in the written format um, in the actual group or the videos that are being posted on YouTube or wherever I'm sharing the 30 Steps to Live a Purpose Driven Life, hashtag 30 Steps to Live, but you want to be reviewing your awareness documentation. Here's the formula. You say... Um, during the video, when you're making it, you say, problem, what is the problem I'm experiencing? What is the pain that I'm really feeling? You're unraveling that by expressing yourself freely. What is the hope that I get from being able to acknowledge and accept this pain, right? And then how does that move into having a solution? In which case you set a goal, you, you share something that is an outcome or end result that you're looking for. And literally that formula also moves in alignment with truth, which is taking an action to then a reaction, a result, and then finding a new problem. Um, you know, it's, it's how you connect with people. That's how you can speak with people if you want them to feel your pain and express yourself um, freely. Um, you're going to do the exact same thing as you move that through that entire process that is trying to achieve progress, which is that truth that we just spoke about. And you're going to rewrite problem pain, hope, solution. Try and do it in four paragraphs if you can. Write as much as you can um, to be able to get out so you literally get like a double healing benefit from expressing yourself. You do the review. If you want from the awareness documentations, you can cut them up and distribute it as micro content at scale. First thing you post is the macro content. If, if you want to make this public and build your personal brand, you post the actual whole video and then you cut up multiple videos um you can post like three minute versions and then see how those do and then you take those two three minute versions that you made and depending on how people like them um you end up reposting um a third version with the best parts of that what people gave feedback for which was good and you improve upon it right um and you can post like let's say four um, or more uh, different one minute versions of it and then you know you write for all of those you do it again and again and again and again and again on repetition um, that's basically you know your healing process the awareness documentation hashtag ad talk um, and you know the more you do it the, the faster you will heal the faster you'll better understand yourself and everybody else so that's that's part of like doing an awareness documentation a day typically if you you keep it low low um low a low amount of time and you keep it um, within some sort of organized plan of action where you only do 10 minutes a day if you need to go more 
to express yourself freely and and get all the points across um go longer than 10 minutes you know go 20 minutes go go 50 minutes like i'm doing now um but ultimately you want to kind of try and keep it short if you can without limiting yourself and having boundaries so that you can you can play it back and write a review on it because that'll take a lot of time the more time you take to record these videos um so like i said you ask god in gratitude i hope these tangents aren't affecting you in a negative way i know i go on a little bit but it's it's all connecting the dots so i hope that this really helps you in connecting the truth you know leave a comment below um if you, if you happen to be commenting at this time um, watching these videos and um, as I'm going through this process maybe I can make some sort of improvement or corrections but I'm, I'm really trying to connect the dots in this particular video because it's so important and vital in your process and progress finding your truth that um, I really want to get everything everything important foundational right so ask God in gratitude for for life what's my assignment for the day then do some uh, variation of breath work uh, meditation breath work study and writing it's brief briefly right so then you, you go out and uh, you exercise, you work out. I mean, you, you get some stimulation through your body um, and, and you get your glands firing and working and, and releasing some of these hormones and some of the energy um, so that, you know, when you, when you actually um, get into action in the morning, it actually helps stimulate your body in a way that you can think clearer, focus more, um, and, and really uh, better discipline yourself throughout your day and, and, and produce in productivity. So when you do that, you actually get a better night's sleep if you exercise in the morning. If you exercise at night, then your body's still stimulated, it's hyperactive, um, you're gonna have trouble sleeping because, you know, um, I, I don't know the vocabulary words when it comes to biology, but basically, you're stimulated. It's like, it's like playing a video game on your phone, on the computer, playing with a console. Um, you know, you do that before you go to sleep, your brain is gonna be hyperactive. You know, you're basically putting an adrenaline rush in your brain. And if it's false, if it's like this, then, you know, your your body and your, your brain are disconnected. So you shouldn't be doing that stuff before you go to sleep because then it's going to be stimulated. If you look at a computer screen and you don't have, like, the night light on um, to lower the brightness and make it an orange screen, or if you don't have, you know, um, Swanwick sleep glasses, I don't know if I have them here. I have these orange glasses I'll probably show you later. Um, that you can wear they have um, UV blue light blocking uh, you know glasses and they stop it they, they help your mind release melatonin so that you can actually fall asleep um, and you know that way you know you're able to do your work before you go to sleep and, and get things done and then you know you're ready to pass out it's good it's good stuff uh huh. So you work out in the morning after your your daily gratitude practice and and just um just relaxing, and then after that, you know, you take a shower and you're getting ready. You come back and you have a greater extended period of time in meditation, and this can be seen as like where you connect with God and have prayer and spiritually, you know, invoke and 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 create what it is that you want throughout your day. So from that space, you explore how I want my day to go, um, how you want your day to go. You know, you can look at your schedule. You can, you can see what it is that you've got going on, and you literally put positive energy out into the space. So look, I got a meeting, you know, with Lewis today, and I'm going to try and bring the absolute best energy that I can into this meeting, so I'm going to pray about it, and I'm going to give, give my faith and belief that, you know, I can just be the best um, presence and, and provide the best service by being there today um, and that's what you do for your events um, so you you then experience invoke the sp experience of spontaneous goodness right and what that means is the unknown has permission to take over my life and bring into my life good that I've never experienced before blessings that I have never experienced before or someone that I am to serve that I don't know about yet. Um, meaning, you allow the unknown, unknown to take hold of your life. You embrace it. Instead of trying to control everything and be in this raw, raw um, mentality of personal development, you, you're, you're accepting everything as is. And therefore, 
you know, um, creating happiness and, and, and bringing yourself into a position of self-awareness, um, everything that actually is, it, you know, you're, you're, you're having it kind of, instead of having things happen because of you all the time, every single thing, scheduling out your day in 15 minute portions, you're just like letting it flow. You're in a flow state, things happen, and, and you know, you're not always trying to take control. Of course, you want things to happen because of you, and you take control of your life. You don't just let it slip. But when you do this, things tend to flow, and God tends to open doorways for you, and, you know, you, you don't have to be in a controlling place because you're spiritually in tune and in alignment with your soul and your role and everything that's going to unfold for you. So we're unfolding into self-awareness here. So when you do that, you are able to access and live out the freedom of the known. And the known is really the constrictor, it's the blocker, it's the barricade from you being able to have the life that you actually want. Because when you become convicted and you're convinced that everything that you know right now is all that exists, you cannot get new experiences, right? If you're convinced, oh man, this isn't going to work out for me, you know, like I'm a terrible, terrible, terrible dancer and my wife wants to dance with me for the second time today. Last time it was a bad experience. I felt like she was judging me. You know, I was really stressed out. My body was getting tensed. I was a lot of tension. You know, I didn't feel comfortable moving as fast as she was. She was trying to teach me how to salsa and, you know, through this experience, I was just having a really hard time getting to grips with feeling comfortable and I wasn't feeling loose and flimsy and it was not a welcoming experience. So what I have to do here is be able to try it again and again until you make it work, until you find out, hey, you know, I've been doing this for three months. Um, I'm not exactly feeling like it's my talent or my gift. You know, let's kind of set that apart and not do it anymore. Um, let's focus on something new so that we can actually find our role and stay true. Um, to ourselves and our soul, not compromising and staying in the same job for a year, 24 months, two years, and thinking things are going to change because they're not, you know, you, you just, it doesn't happen. Um, you got to keep creating new experiences and tasting new things so that things end up working out for you in your favor because your personality, your character, um, it's supposed to be in tune with something that you're meant to do here on this earth. So after that point, you then in turn go to work. And when you go to work, you're if you have a team, if you're the leader of that team, however it is, you know, you just get together with the team and establish intentions. Now, you know, work, corporate environments, different structures, it'll be a bit harder to do that. You know, you probably won't be able to do it. But if you're a leader of your own team, you go to work, you get together with them in the morning and you instead establish your intentions for the day, you know, basically like, you know, your goal setting. Um, and, and putting out the energy in the right space. So throughout the course of the day, there's also checking in. You check in with your team members, see how they're doing. You know, you just become a part of, of that family. Um, and then in the evening, you know, everything's done. Um, you're settling down. Basically, you're going to bed now. There's a brief sitting before you go to sleep. And in turn, like I was mentioning earlier, you invite even while you are sleeping um, if you can be used anywhere to take on and, and take you to where you are to be used as a force of healing, uh, a presence of encouragement, or teach me even, at, teach yourself even as you are sleeping. Um, whether it's spiritual guides, aids and helpers, whether it's the presence that's never an absence. So all of that, if you really listen to it, you're going to bed now. It's a brief sitting before you go to sleep. You're going to invite even while you are sleeping, if you can be used anywhere, um, to be taken there, to be used as a force of healing, uh, a presence of encouragement, or for you to be taught even, as, even while you're sleeping. Whether it's spiritual guides, aids, and helpers, whether it's the presence that's never an absence, you welcome it. So again, this is the freedom of the known. Bring it into yourself, your soul, and welcoming it to change your life and for you to change other people's experiences. So um, this is a huge spiritual freedom topic. Um, you do this every day and it's really, really going to create that awakening within you and you're gonna start to experiencing things you've never believed in for. Because when you believe in the freedom of the known, that's when your life begins to stop taking hold or you stop trying to take hold of your life and your life takes hold of you 
and you're you're just living and staying true so this is coming to the end of the video it's coming up to an hour now I just want to end it before 60 minutes. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Please do this daily ritual. I know it will help you. I have gratitude for your soul. Thank you for connecting with mine. I love you unconditionally.